what I see? Let's talk about reflection, refraction, and making a pinhole camera. I'm Claire Meshkat from Vivify STEM. Today we'll be doing some demonstrations involving the physics of optics. Before becoming an educator, I worked as an aerospace engineer. So we will end this session with some applied science in the form of an engineering design challenge. Let's first talk about vision. Your students should know that their brains cannot always be trusted to tell them the truth about what they are seeing. Try this quick experiment first. Have your students point their index fingers together, yet keep them about an inch apart. Then have them move their fingers to about three inches in front of their eyes. What do you see? It should look like there's a floating finger segment right in front of you. But why? Our brains are constantly trying to anticipate the information it will be presented with from your eyes and fill in the gaps where you may not actually be able to see, like right in front of your face. If we can't trust our eyes, then what can we trust? Science. So let's understand how vision works so that we can better understand what we are seeing. Reflection. We are most familiar with this principle because your students have likely all looked in a mirror today. Reflection is the change in the direction of a light wave to return to the source from a surface. In other words, when light bounces off of something right back to where it came from. That is reflection. So what is it when light goes through a different direction? Refraction is when a light wave changes direction as it passes through a change in medium. Let's try some demonstrations. Give each of your students a shiny metal spoon and ask them to look at the back or convex side. They will see their face looking back at them as the light is being reflected back at them. Their faces may look a little different though, perhaps more stretched out. That is because the light is bouncing off at angles. Now turn the spoon around and look on the inside of the spoon. You will see your face, but it's upside down and flipped. When the light is reflecting off of the spoon, this time, the direction they are reflecting is swapping to flip your in image like this. The point where the light crosses is called the focal point. If you have a big enough spoon, you could even move it close enough to your face to where you get inside the focal point and you would no longer look upside down. Refracted light does some even more interesting things. Instead of the light being bounced back at you, it keeps going but changes direction as it passes through another substance. Maybe your students have noticed how a straw can look broken when it's in a glass of water. As light passes from air into the water, which is denser, it changes direction or refracts. This makes the straw under the water appear to be in a different place than the straw above the water. Take this a step further. Fill a large clear container that's round with water. Then Draw a horizontal arrow on an index card. Show it to your students and make sure the container is at their eye level and that you are standing behind it with the index card. Have them watch while you slowly lower the index card behind the container. The arrow will appear to switch directions. Instead of spreading out in straight lines, the light changes direction both when it enters and leaves the glass of water. This change of direction is refraction, and it happens because again, the light slows down as it enters the glass and speeds up again as it leaves. Here is another fun, quick demonstration having to do with optics that you can do with your students. Take a note card and draw a V and then put it in a Ziploc bag. Then take a dry erase marker and draw the top 
of a heart. Now, put this without your students seeing, don't let them see this, and then stick it into water. Hold it at an angle, and then have your students come guess what you drew a picture of. They should only see the top that looks like a three. What is happening here? How come you cannot see the full shape? Show your students that it's actually a full heart, but when you put it in the water, the bottom disappears. What's happening? Reflection. The plastic baggie is allowing the light to reflect off of the Ziploc baggie when it's underneath the water. Now have your students come up with their own designs and see if they can replicate this demonstration with some of their classmates. Now that you have laid a good foundational understanding of reflection and refraction, it's time for an applied science engineering design challenge. For this challenge, your students will be learning about the early days of cameras. Artists used an early camera in the 1200s. It was called Camera Obscura. Camera Obscura was not able to hold an image like a modern camera does, but it could project the image. This allowed artists to trace or paint the image in perfect perspective. When they were finished, they must have turned their paintings right side up. Why? The way the camera obscura works, sending light through a pinhole, causes the light to create an inverted image as the opposite end of the light is displayed on the image screen. Just like how you saw on the spoon. Camera obscura is the foundational optical principle on which modern day cameras are built. You can see in the picture how the bottom of the chair reflects up on the light ray to the top of the image screen while the top of the chair reflects down on a light ray to the bottom of the screen. Pretty cool that someone figured this out and created a camera obscura. The first camera obscura was huge. The name actually means dark room and it literally was a full room. Challenge your students to create their own pinhole camera that demonstrates the use of camera obscura. A good design will block light except for a tiny pinhole. Show an image on the sc image screen and support itself. To complete this challenge, they will need a dark room or closet with one light source, like a lamp without a shade or a computer or iPad showing a bright, simple object like a tree. You will also need several materials for building and testing. The materials suggested for building the pinhole camera are a shoe box or cardboard to build a box, wax paper, masking tape, aluminum foil, construction paper, thumbtack to make a pinhole, and other materials around your classroom. Students should use the engineering design process to design and build a pinhole camera that meets the following constraints or rules. First, it has only one pinhole to receive light. It must project an image on wax paper upside down that works without being touched or in other words, needs some kind of handle and only uses the materials that you provide. Have students look at the materials that they have and brainstorm ways they can use them to make the different parts of their pinhole camera. Ask questions like, what size and shape should your camera be? How can you make the camera point at the light so that you can view it without touching it? Next, they should draw their designs and label what materials will be used. Once they have a plan, it's time to build. You will test your pinhole camera by going into a dark room with only one lamp or light source and pointing your pinhole camera at the light source. The light source will reflect an inverted image on your pinhole camera wax paper image screen. 
A successful test meets all the constraints and shows the image upside down on the wax paper screen. If their image is not showing or not showing bright enough, think about ways you can improve the design of your pinhole camera. Is light coming in from another crack or hole in the camera? Do they need to seal off more light? Do they need a smaller pinhole or a larger pinhole? Are there design changes that they can make to help their pinhole camera image screen view the image brighter? Your students will love learning about the manipulation of light and it might even change the way that they view our world. I hope you have enjoyed this lab. Connect with me on social media or email with any questions or for more resources. Hope to hear from you soon.